NASA is working to send humans back to the moon 54 years after Neil Armstrong took his first steps on the lunar surface. Russia and India also hoping to take off. But who will win the race? Artemis II astronauts toured the crew module that will carry them on a 10-day mission around the moon and back. And liftoff of Artemis I. Concerns about the capsule's heat shield raised during an uncrewed test flight last year may push next year's astronaut mission into early 2025. And putting boots on the lunar surface may take even longer as NASA contractor SpaceX continues work on the prospective landing craft. More than half a century after America beat Russia to the moon, Russia and India are in a race to land uncrewed spacecraft near the lunar South Pole this month, and China plans to send astronauts by 2030. Ice discovered in that region could be used for life support or converted into rocket fuel for future missions to Mars. That has spurred demand for robot manufacturers to test how machines and ultimately humans can work for extended periods in this unexplored, super cold environment. We're testing systems to minus 180 degrees C. So those are liquid nitrogen region temperatures. Those are significantly cold. There's some areas that look like they might be even colder than that on the moon. Legal experts say the race for resources presents new challenges to a 56-year-old treaty that sets general guidelines for international space exploration. A state like China or the United States cannot claim property on the moon, cannot claim territory on the moon. But what does that mean for commercial enterprises? And what does it mean when you want to go to the moon for a specific reason, like getting access to the water ice? Experts warn China's ambitions could lead to potential conflicts on the moon, but they also point out cooperation between the U.S. and Russia led to construction of the International Space Station.